and that's possible. Now we're seeing, you know, success stories of biomaterials and regenerative materials in the hundreds. We'd like to see it in the thousands, um, maybe the tens of thousands, whatever we need to get the job done. What is Materium? Um, Materium's a, a platform in the simplest explanation, um, but we often say that we are we're sort of not just a tech platform, although we do rely on tech quite a lot. We're more of a, um, a data commons and a community. So we're really, what we're aiming for is to kind of do a transformational shift um, in the way that materials are produced and used. Um, specifically now we're focused on plastics, really trying to def transform that economy from a very centralized and linear one that's designed for petrochemical plastics to one that's highly distributed um, and really designed for renewable and abundant uh, sources. We often say that we like to see the future of the plastics industry is similar to renewable energy, where it's based on renewables and it's highly adaptive to place, rather than predicated on a kind of centralized global economy. Um, and that's possible. Now we're seeing, you know, success stories of biomaterials and regenerative materials in the hundreds. We'd like to see it in the thousands, um, maybe the tens of thousands, whatever we need to get the job done. Um, and that's where Materium comes in. So we're, we're providing the data commons and the open tools and the community to really support those early stage participants to scale and also to create far more diversity and participation in the regenerative materials economy than what you normally see today. So Liz, I understand what you're saying is that the sort of mission of your organization in some ways is to accelerate the transformation to re renewable materials. Just pretend for a minute that I'm not very smart. What exactly, it might not be that hard for you, what exactly do you mean when you say tech? What is your tech doing? Ooh, well, sure, okay. We'll do in this together. We'll go, on a journey. <laughs> we'll go on a journey together. So um, we normally, um, we're really leveraging two types of tech. One, open data, and two, um, artificial intelligence specifically data mining and active learning. So uh, the, one of the major issues right now is that data on regenerative materials is incredibly fragmented. It's largely academic. You can find it in hundreds of thousands of scientific papers, and they're all using discipline-specific jargon. Engineers, material scientists, I'm one of them, so I can say we're sort of the worst in terms of like accessible language. Um, so one of the things that Materium does is we use data mining to collect the 100 to 500,000 unique material formulations for biomaterials. And we put that into one place, which is a data commons, completely open source and accessible to all, in a really user-friendly way, in a searchable way. So all of a sudden, the world's knowledge of how to create high-performance biomaterials is at your fingertip. We then pair that with an active learning algorithm that can do the hard searching for you. So if you are a biomaterial developer and you're partnering with a consumer brand and you've come together and said, okay, these are our performance goals. It has to have this shore hardness or this um, compressive strength. And also here are our impact goals. It needs to have this amount of CO2 reduction, this type of um, organic content. It's like an Ask Jeeves for it renewable materials. It is sort of like that. So if you input those performance goals, the active learning engine will actually identify high potential and promising formulations for you, which then as a team, you can go forward to rapidly synthesize, test, and ensure which direction you want to go forward with. So what we're basically trying to do is petrochemicals has about 100 years on us. They've been developing through trial and error and quite a lot of investment over the last 100 years to produce these really seemingly perfect performative materials, we're trying to put that 100 years in about 10 so that the material developers and the brands that we're seeing really trying to commit to more regenerative materials actually have the data, the tools, and the community they need at their fingertips to rapidly get to market much faster. What is exciting in your world and how do we put it to scale? So whoever can answer first, go ahead. Go ahead, you're in order. Okay, I'll take a crack. Um, one of the things that we're 
focused on from the scaling question is um, feedstock harvesting, which maybe a lot of people don't find that exciting. I think we do. <laughs> um, maybe it's a niche interest, but we're at Materium, it, it's, of course, you can design a material to be organic in nature um, from a content perspective and to ensure that it fully biodegrades and it can become uh, nutrient rich additives for soil and so on. But at the same time, you also must consider how that feedstock is harvested at the start of the chain. And for us, we really look to nature to help guide us with that. So the hundreds of biomaterial recipes that we have on the platform right now are actually derived from around 12 to 15 biopolymers. And that's very like indicative of nature, right? Nature can produce a huge diverse array of solutions and materials, all from a very common set of building blocks. And you can find those building blocks abundantly everywhere. So the, the small number of biopolymers we're using, you can derive from a vastly diverse um, set of feedstocks. And that's critical because to move into a regenerative future, it's absolutely paramount that we don't overexploit specific source uh, ecosystems or um, source resources. And that's the, the piece of the puzzle that we're working on most specifically now is really helping to provide geospatial specific data on feedstock diversity and feedstock supply so that we can really support regional value chains and ensuring that they're sourcing responsibly and diversifying their, their supply. So that's, and I think um, synthetic biology is a huge part of that. I think leveraging non-primary feedstocks is a huge part of that. So also on the platform, we have massively deprioritized primary feedstocks, specifically those that compete for land use and, and food security. And we're really incredibly surprised with the diversity of high performance materials you can produce from unavoidable food waste and byproducts, unavoidable byproducts from different value chains. So that's something that we're very much looking into.